Hey guys, today we're gonna have the age-old question, React versus Angular. And now we're even gonna throw Vue in there, um, just cause people are gonna say, well, what about Vue? Uh, <laughs> by the end of the video. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be looking at some stats to sort of justify what direction should you go when you're trying to pick up a framework and for what reasons and you know how, which one is most likely to land you a job realistically at the end of the day. I want to take a moment to thank this week's sponsor, TemplateMonster.com. Are you interested in potentially making some passive income? Might I recommend Template Monsters Marketplace? And there'll be a link in the description below where you can go and check out for more details. But you can sell up to 31 different types of template. Maybe you're a PowerPoint god or a resume genius. These are all skills that you can go and build templates for almost for 31, 31 different platforms and growing. Check them out at templatemonster.com. Before we jump straight into some stats and sort of some job postings and things like that, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each one of the these frameworks. At the end of the day, you're going to need to be comfortable with JavaScript and you have frameworks to help really assist you with the DOM and maybe some functionality. So on that note, we have React, we have Angular, we have Vue. There's, I'm, a, I'm gonna link to a, a nice article that's gonna go a little bit more in depth and in detail than I am going to right now because um, you know, to compare these three things in 10 minutes is, is kind of, kind of uh, not realistic um, from a, a very practical standpoint. So um, we have Angular. Angular is a very heavy framework. It has a lot of functionality it's very object oriented based. It has TypeScript, um, which I think is is a very good um, very good I, uh, item to be included. Uh, JavaScript eventually will become, believe it or not, a typed, a statically typed language. Um, it will happen uh, probably in the next five years or so. Somehow they'll they'll figure it out. And I think TypeScript is a great way to get people familiar with with the environment. I think it's a great way to get people start thinking in an object oriented way for people who maybe haven't come from a, a traditional CS program where you're gonna be learning Java or C sharp or something like that. Um, it does have some drawbacks. You gotta learn TypeScript <laughs> is one of them, right? Um, it's a lot slower than um, maybe Vue or React most of the time because of all the, is it so slow that the user's ever gonna notice? Probably not. And it has things like lazy loading and they, you know, um, they've actually, as they've done updates to uh, Angular, they've they've increased the speed of uh, development uh, for it compiling, as well as for it to actually run um, for using like uh, standard Webpack settings and things like that. Um, another pro that people don't talk about is it has one real dedicated sole team at Google which I think is a, a very valid thing to state because um, when we're talking about uh, React and Vue, it's not necessarily the case. Um, now it is a bit over-engineered I find at times, but um, the more I use it, the more I, I, I grow to love it. So uh, I am a, a Angular developer as most of you know, but um, it does have um, several drawbacks. So what about React? React is, React is uh, fun. Uh, React is nice. Um, it is, uh, to get started with React, it is, um, it is uh, the simple, it is the truth of the matter. Um, it is lightweight, it compiles fast, and it handles a, uh, it's probably the, um, the, the most in-demand framework of the three by far, and we'll, we'll show some stats about that uh, moving forward. But um, it's 100% open source, which I don't always like, but most are nowadays. Um, it does have a little bit of a documentation issue, but depending on, on what type of developer you are, I find that documentation is always crap no matter where it is. If it's maintained by Google, if it's maintained by Facebook, it doesn't really matter. It always ends up being shit. And what you end up going for documentation are blogs and videos and people who have worked and actually put the time into to understand um, uh, what to uh, what to do um, I do find that the one my personal opinion about react and, and one thing that I don't like about it is that um, you have this 
you have this very strange this very strange uh, thing where people like to talk how lightweight React is, and it is out of the package. But what ends up happening is, as you move into React, you start installing all these mini libraries along the way, and then you have like 30 or 40 that are maintained by various developers who might be part-time projects and or full-time projects. You don't really know. And so I, I, that makes me a little bit worrisome because it, uh, it's not ideal, especially if you're working in a production application. At least when you work with something like Angular, you know that they are consistently, they have dedicated teams who are paid to consistently make it better. And um, sometimes when you go with React, you use a lot of these other third-party libraries that are a little bit, um, a little bit uh, not always there. So um, Vue, Vue is sort of this the new the new hotness at the end of the day. People are always asking about Vue. Um, so some some pros to Vue, and I, I say this as somebody who um, isn't super familiar with it. I actually want to dive in this weekend and build some projects and stuff like that, um, just to, to become more familiar with it. Um, it is my understanding very similar to Angular One in sort of its design and and somewhat familiar in that way, and but more than anything else. Of the three, it is very um, newbie friendly. It is the, it is a, um, it scales well, and uh, it is small. It's um, lightweight in that sense, and so um, it is, it is, uh, it is one of those libraries that are tiny, and maybe people like it. And and uh, when you're just getting started, it's easy to learn compared to the other two. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Vue matures and grows. Um, it's it's ran by a small group of developers, so maybe not going to evolve as fast as React or Angular, which, depending on who you ask, isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, but that's my that's sort of my two cents on the on the three uh, frameworks. So let's take a little look at the job market, right? The job postings, and this is where I think you should really. Uh, define your learning path. And by the way, this this page isn't completely up to date. Um, you can see it's currently not being updated, but you have an idea here of what it was like uh, as of July 2017, which is fair, f close enough. We're within a year that I think you're not going to see the market shift too much. Um, so uh, you can see here that the the Angular job interest and the React job. You can see the rise of React and Angular over the last few years, as well as the rise in Vue, right? Um, oddly enough, this one's being maintained, job seeker interest, but not this one. That's so strange. Um, but you can see that Vue, people are getting very interested in Vue. In, comparatively, maybe not so much, but uh, when you go to 2016, about sevenfold more than they were before. And you can see the job, the sheer amount of job postings from React to, to Vue and Angular is astronomical. So so I think by looking at this at the very least, what we can do is we can um, just make a rough correlation that we can pretty much say that if our goal here is to get a job, we can get rid of Vue. Absolutely, no. there's no reason to have any part of Vue in here. There's no jobs in Vue. Um, Let's not say there's no jobs, right? Everyone wants to say, I found a job in Vue. Yes, there are some jobs in Vue, but in comparison, there are little to no jobs in Vue, right? So if Angular and React combined have 99% of the market share of jobs that use JavaScript frameworks, Vue has 1%. And um, I think your time is better spent learning um, Angular or React. So with that being said, we're going to discard Vue from our stats here, goodbye view. Um, and we get this sort of Angular or React. And in terms of job seeker interest, that's cool. People wanted work in both for the most part, uh, but you have this exponential rise in React. Um, but you can see here that there's clearly a, a winner here of what the job postings are in. There's more jobs in React. And if you go to the home page, you can see right here, uh, just by when you search for React, there's almost 42,000 new jobs. And you search for Angular, there's about 12,000 new jobs. Um, now, these are just 
arbit not arbitrary numbers, but there is some, there is some truth behind this. Uh, so you can obviously do your own research, and I, I would bet that if we went and we searched for front-end engineer and we looked through the top 10 or top, let's just say top 100, um, you know, job apps that came out today for front-end engineer in, in the United States, that what we would see is about 75 of them would be looking for React primarily and about 25 would be looking for Angular. Now, um, should you not learn Angular if you don't, if you don't want to learn React? Angular is a great alternative. Even I, as an Angular developer, can recognize that the community is going in a React direction. And I would encourage you to take it upon yourself that if you're trying to get your very first developer job and uh, you're going to need to pick up a framework. I have a whole video talking about uh, front end skills that you should go and, and get that React is the one for you to get, get up and going. Um, so that's my sort of two cents on it and, and which, which direction you may want to go. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell for when we drop in as, a, as our boy Ty Lopez says, knowledge. <laughs> uh, see you guys next time. Bye. All right, so the new thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start answering questions at the end of the video. So if you have any questions that you think are silly or you just want to know one answer to, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below and I'll pull one and answer it. So um, human151 is our first victim. He says, I have a stupid question. If you're working on a site, can you use two libraries? Um, as my manager says, there are no stupid questions, only stupid people, but that's besides the point. Uh, <laughs> I'm just giving a hard time, man. If you can, would there be any reason to use both jQuery and React, or would that be redundant? So although oftentimes using frameworks, multiple libraries, um, there's a framework and there's a library, and there's a very fine line in between them. But when React first came out, people actually still use jQuery in it, specifically do the Ajax call. So yes, you can do it, and you can actually use React within Angular if you wanted to. Um, so most of the time it's possible. Uh, most of the time it's okay, um, but most of the time it's not done. Um, but jQuery is considered more of a library than a, a framework like Angular would be. So you can use it all within it. At the end of the day, it's just JavaScript within JavaScript. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see when I post new content. And if you're interested in any of my Udemy courses, I currently have some on JavaScript and two on Angular, and I'm constantly adding to them and updating them. It's been a lot of fun. So if you're interested in that, there's links in the description below where you can save some money in the process and help me out. See you next time.